Here we are today at Paradise Now Church. Whoops. And uh, we're in the New Testament today on the 22nd of the uh, 6th. 2.16. New Testament writings of Luke. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to start reading in that parable of the... Um, the lepers in uh, verse 11. Let's start there today on the 22nd of the 6th. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village there met him ten lepers who they met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. There it is. Faith again. It's always faith, isn't it? Get a lot of people come into the fellowship, you know, over the years. See a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people come to the fellowship. And a lot of people go. And uh, it's faith. It's always faith at the end of the day. It's not a matter of just grace. It's not a matter of God's power only. We, we have to access that. You know, we, we have to utilise that. And the world can't utilise the power of God because they don't have faith. They haven't walked through the door of faith. They haven't been granted faith. They haven't been even been granted power to uh, overtake and forsake their sin. They're, they're bound, but not glory bound, you know. Paul went bound, didn't he? He was just wrapped, hey? And um, he was totally encompassed by the Lord, uh, angels, heaven, you know, the whole lot were with him. Lock, stock and barrel, anything that could come out of uh, the third heaven was with him. He'd even took a glimpse in the door of the third heaven. Right? And didn't want to talk about it because I believe maybe he might have said something that wasn't perfect, you know. He might have said something in his, in his um, uh, carnal uh, uh, way that wasn't to glorify Jesus. Because there were times when Paul did say things that he says, I say this and not the Lord. This is me speaking. You know, he made it very clear. So today, uh, our message will cover all these scriptures, I, I suppose, but uh, we're going to um, take our title from verse 16. Verse 16 today. He fell down on his face, Jesus' feet, 
giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. And that, that thanks really jumps off the page to me, you know. And the title of our message today is Ungrateful and Unsaved. That's the title of our message today. Ungrateful and, and, and unsaved. I don't believe you can be ungrateful towards the Lord and be saved. I don't believe that for one minute. Because there's a distinction in this parable. It, 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 it's clear. It's a clear distinction for uh, the student of the word. And the Lord gives us so much and then he adds to that uh, as he wills. And many have read that and they've rejoiced in it. Oh, look, they were all cleansed and... But the Lord gives you that little bit more when your heart is open to him and you're willing to surrender a little more, a little more uh, uh, until he uh, has you well and truly, um, uh, what would you say, um, and he is Lord, you know, he, he is Lord. We, we come out of Jesus, you know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd thing, you know. Well, he, he does start off as shepherd, doesn't he? But he has to be Lord. As we go through the baby stage, you know, he's shepherd, isn't he? Everything's nice and cuddly and um, fluffy. But then we come into, you know, we start to grow up and, and we realise, hang on, you know, he has to be Lord. Otherwise, he's not being glorified. We can't have Jesus as buddy pal mate, you know. He's my list, and this is what I want done, and I want it done now. And, uh, you know, I want the best seat in heaven. I want my son and daughter to sit on your left and right. And this is the way it will be. I mean, that is not anger management, that, that's not turning things, anger into swans, is it, you know? They, those sort of people need to go to specsavers because uh, they're not seeing things correctly, you know? God gives us eyes to see and when we read the word, we come to the conclusion after a while that we're never going to come to the end of it. We come to the conclusion that his word is infinite. He, he, he let, that's the whole, I believe it's the joke, you know. I believe God's got such a sense of humour. You know, I'm sure he's, he's Irish, you know. And, <laughs> well, I'm beginning to think so, you know. And um, because of the things he says and the parables he writes, you know. Um, Irish uh, comedians are usually extremists. And... Um, they usually say things that, you know, some people don't get for days and then it dawns on them, you know. They, 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 they sort of portray the Irish as dumb, but they're very clever, actually. Yeah. And so, well, we know Jesus is very clever, don't we? We know he's omniscient, he's so clever. So, ungrateful and unsaved. Right? And here we are in Luke 17, 16. He fell on his face at his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. Hey? And, and he was a Samaritan. Boy, oh boy. Straight away, Jesus was, you know, he was on it, wasn't he? Where's the others? Hey? Where's the others? It, this is an, a last days, you know, end times parable, I reckon. This is surely an end times parable. Hey? And no Aik, even no Aik, you know, the one in ten. Heavy stats, you know, very heavy stats. Verse 15. And one, the oh, lowliest number you can ever do, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, hey, returned. Ha, 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 ha. With a loud voice, glorifying God, eh? This guy was was grateful. He was grateful, this one. Giving thanks, eh? And uh, 
I believe that you know, if you look at that word thanks, and, and he gave thanks, in relation to the Lord and, and, and to Jesus, I deconstructed that word so that we get a better understanding of what thanks really is and where this leper was. And the T in thanks, uh, the Lord was ministering to me and he said, that guy trusted Jesus, you know. That leper trusted Jesus. You know, when we give thanks to the Lord, we, we, we say, I trust you with my life. You know, I, I, I trust you. You know, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm yours, you know. And the hate just for, I honour you. And he came back and, and you know, uh, the scripture reads there in um, verse 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, hey, giving thanks. This wasn't just a murmur, oh yeah, thanks, you know, from some ungrateful person. And we can rightfully tag the other nine as ungrateful. Ungrateful. This is um, one of the, if we just turn in our Bibles to Timothy, as we let the ghost of God lead, the ghost of the Christ. Uh, just turn our Bibles to Second Timothy. Okay. This leper was no whispering jack, was he? Okay. Uh, Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. This includes women too. This is not just men. If you want to just leave it as men, you're going to have to take every scripture that relates to men and um, say it's only men. So w women aren't even considered. They're so pathetic. Hello? Hello? Hell? Oh. So we can't just, you know, that should be forward slash women there, but anyway, uh, Paul was a humble writer, wasn't he? Okay. Men and women will be lovers of themselves. Love, we see that all over the TV, don't we? You know, they're just so much time spent on the, on the flesh and the face and the body and, the, you know, all sorts of things they're doing. It really is, you know. It, it really is uh, so self and so flesh and carnal and, you know, very bad. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Men and women will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. There it is, unthankful. Smack bang there in the middle, isn't it? And it goes on, unloving, unforgiving and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I mean, it's nothing to be uh, trifled with, is it? That's nothing to be trifled with. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you've seen it, some photos of lepers, some people have worked among the lepers, you know, and uh, outcast people, you know, as the scripture says, where are we in Luke 17? In the beginning there, in uh, verse 11, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered a certain village. There met him ten men uh, who were lepers who stood afar off. It, doesn't, it, it says ten men, doesn't it? Ten men, not, not women in that case. I seen a picture. I was, I, I was looking for a picture to put with the message, you know, no, all, all good enhancement to the message as people are listening and they look at the picture. And there was a woman leper there. That must be the, uh, you know, discrimination thing coming in there. There was a woman leper amongst the ten lepers. Hello. I thought, no, nah, I don't want that picture. So I got something more childlike, you know. I got something more childlike and um, more humble, you know, a picture. 
very basic and simple, but it's something that's not being done in the churches, in the ministers, in, in people. It really doesn't matter what you do for people today, they're not thankful, they're not grateful. Right? Which is an end time characteristic of the unsaved. Only one of them. How many you got there? Um, 2 Timothy 3. Let's count them. Perilous times will come. Men and women will be lovers, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous. With it. Oh, I've lost. I've got no more fingers left. Let me do my toes. Uh, I don't know how many of them. All these different characteristics of the unsaved. Right? These are basic, you know, um, basically uh, lepers that, that, that have never been made whole. Because we have that distinction as we go on the scriptures. But as I said in uh, Luke 17, verse 12, and he entered the village and there met him ten men, no women, who were lepers, who stood afar off. I mean, there it is there, isn't it? You know, it's terrible. They stood afar off and that's the way they lived their lives, you know. That's the way uh, a lot of people live their lives. They're, they're so far away, you know, they're so inferior. And they're so bogged down with complexes, you know, uh, and um, insecurity, and they've been bruised, you know. These little grapes have been bruised, and <laughs> they're, they're, all sorts of things have happened. Do you know what I mean? To these people, and they're far off, and they won't they won't take that leap of faith and um, go to the church, you know. And, and hear what the Lord wants to say to them. But here we have these ten, uh, verse 13, they lifted up their voices, and uh, I, I see that as they're crying out, you know. They were, and they had the right, you know, they had the right heart there, you know. Um, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. But, I mean, it didn't last long, really, did it? You know, yeah, it didn't really last long. But Jesus doesn't mind. Jesus heals people all the time, all different ways. But he's not their master. He was only the master of one, really, and that was the Samaritan, the foreigner. You know, um, the grateful leper. Wow. I trust you, you know. I honour you. The T H A N K S. Thanks. Deconstructed. I trust you, T. I honour you. I I I A. I, I admire you. You know. That, isn't this? This is the way I feel about Jesus. You know, as as an ex leper. You know, I, I'm a grateful leper, and I trust the Lord. And uh, I honour the Lord and, and praise the Lord. I admire Lord Jesus, you know. And the end in thanks, I, 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 need, I need the Lord. Obviously the, these other nine didn't. You know. And the K, I, I, I want to keep, keep, keep near to the Lord. Yeah, he wanted to be near this leper, didn't he? He just wanted to be down there at Jesus' feet. Right? And the S in thanks. Right? Gave thanks. The S is serve. He, he, he was saying, I want to serve you. I'm here to serve. I'm, I'm, I'm here to clean your shoes with my tongue. Right? Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm here to lick the welts of your shoes clean. 
Some people don't even clean the wells of their shoes. You know what I mean? They got shoes worth three hundred dollars, and and the, you know, there's a coal mine in the wells. Yeah, and it doesn't. It just so looks not good. When shoe, when the welts, that's around the side of the shoe. The welts aren't clean. They've got to be clean. And then the shoe, no matter if the shoe's only cheap shoe, looks good. It's for the Lord. We dress for the Lord, don't we? We don't dress for the manager of Kama. We're dressing for God. Right? So the, the key and the code, or the, the dress code when you follow Jesus is clean, tidy. And uh, modern, especially for the women on that one. So, thanks. You know, how hard it is to get that thanks out of some people. And no matter what you're doing, you have to, you know, you have to keep telling them. You can say thanks if you like. <laughs> oh, thanks. Have to cross that one off the list. <laughs> um, yeah. Luke seventeen fourteen. So when he saw them, title of the message today, ungrateful and unsaved. I mean, how how can you be ungrateful? And I've always believed that um, gratitude begets humility, and humility begets gratitude. You know. I've always believed a humble person is grateful. Humble people have power, the Bible says. Humble people are powerful people. He gives power. He gives grace to the humble. But the proud, mm -mm. ain't got no power. They got all these things like, you know, the proud, I'm trying my best, you know, uh, how about, um, you know, I'm dealing with that, or I just happen to fall back again. You know, no power. That's no power. That's proud. God hasn't given them any power because they haven't humbled themselves. They haven't desired in their heart to depart from that sin. Right? But this leper, you know, I, I don't know. Does it really say in the scriptures why they were lepers? I don't know what happened there. But the Lord gave them all the same chance, didn't he? But he never quite gave them all the same. But he did give them all the same opportunity and chance. They were, you know, they went down to the priest. Luke 17, 14. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. I mean, that, that's a mind blower, isn't it? And, and so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. Oh, wow. Because obviously, in those times, the priests were the um, certificate writers, you know. Of, they were the ones to give the nod if they, someone was clean or not. They had some sort of record, you know, like a jail record. Lepers in those times were considered like prisoners within that rotten flesh and, and, and like criminals, you know, stay away from them. They were crying from, from afar. That was their usual uh, position, wasn't it? Afar from everyone else, stay away, you know. And uh, that's why the message of Jesus is so, so wonderful. For those who, for the rejected, you know, and the uh, uh, those who are marginalised, you know, maxed out, marginalised wise, you know, they're, they're rejected and, and, and frowned upon and, and they're afar, you know. And that's how they came to Jesus, from afar. They, they, they ministered, uh, he, they spoke to him. Uh, they stood afar off because that's the way they spoke to everyone and then Jesus came along but Jesus uh, was the one to cleanse them 
he's seen that they were grateful, that, that, that they, were, they were respectful to him, and uh, that they were were humble enough to call out, and humble enough to call him um, not Beelzebub, but call him Jesus Master. Right? But that sadly didn't last long, did it? It's sort of like a lot of people, you know, they you know they got some sort of problem and they come to Jesus and you know he does a few things and and that's yeah that's all right that's great now I've sorted that out I'll see you later <laughs> ungrateful unsaved unsaved definitely unsaved so. Uh, Let's have a look at Luke 17 and uh, Luke 17. Where are we? And uh, verse 18. Were there not any found who returned to give glory hey, to God, except as far as you see, God expects that. God expects you to glorify Him. God expects us, when he does anything for us, you know, uh, we must glory in him. We must glorify him. We don't glorify anything else. Oh, look, I'm cleansed. No, we glorify him. But only the one, only the foreigner, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God? Okay? Except this foreigner. And then Jesus said to the foreigner, Arise, go your way, your faith, see that, has made you well. Some translations render the word complete. Some say whole. I like to take the lot. You know, I like to take um, well, complete and whole. Because I believe that's what, you know, faith does. We done a series on that, didn't we? We done a series on the faith makes well, you know, faith in Jesus makes well, the well well series. We're well wells, hey? We're not down downs. We're well well up ups, and we can tell them to shut up, shut up, you know, because we're. We're well now. We're not sick anymore. Yeah. I'm going to Las Vegas soon. And um, I know I'm going to uh, a leopard colony. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going in there to sick people in Vegas. There's a lot of sick people there. Like about 99% of them, if not more. And... Uh, the Lord wants to see who's ready to glorify him. You know, there might be just the one in ten. I don't know. But uh, there's no doubt about it, the ungrateful are, are unsaved. Ungrateful are unsaved. Verse 19, and he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well, complete, and, or whole. That's what I believe that um, salvation to the uttermost is. You know, I, I believe that's you know the finished product. You know, I, I believe that um, you know we, we can be healed, we, we, we can be cleansed, we can have our name in the book of life, but we can have it removed. You know. We just confirm that with Scripture, Revelation 3. Cause we, we want to see it straight from the lamb's mouth. Not the horse, the lamb. Straight from the lamb's mouth. Revelation 3, 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his, her name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father 
and before his angels. See that? So we can have our name removed. Okay? As I was saying earlier in the meeting that um, we uh, there's people that have come to the fellowship and, they, and they've been blessed, but they haven't come back. You know what I mean? Just like this one leper. It, you know, he came back and, and then he got blessed again. But the others weren't well. Even though they were cleansed, uh, you know, uh, what I believe, what I see in this parable is that uh, what the Lord means when your faith, when he came back, you know, I believe he, it, this was a mental thing. This was this, this was the the inferiority and all the stuff that went with that leper's life. You know, it, it can leave a big stain. People who have been alcoholics and drug addicts and prostitutes, homosexual, and all sorts of things. Pedophiles. And they come to the Lord, you know. And what's that scripture? Uh, it's it's over you. Uh, the Lord tells us, uh, I think it's in, no, it's not in Timothy. <laughs> I had a scripture on my heart. And I, darkness uh, beat me up at the path. Yeah, the scripture that talks about in such were some of you, you know, but we have been cleansed and, and we have been delivered. And uh, it's sad that, you know, I've seen alcoholics and drug addicts and prostitutes and uh, they've heard the word of this ministry and they've been really touched but they never come back you know and the job wasn't completed you know they still had that mindset and this leper coming back to Jesus is a type of um, let's go to Romans let's go to Romans um, well, this is what I believe. This, you know, you see, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, and the the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are the letters concealed, and the letters are the four square gospel revealed. That, that's what I believe, you know. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper uh, into the character of Christ, attitude of, of God. Can someone say amen? amen? So in Romans 12, we're going to read verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world. There it is there. But by, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see that? See the first bit has to be done. Verse 1 is done. And then verse 2 can be done. And so, uh, you know, the nine lepers never presented themselves again, did they? You know, they were going to take those bodies, you know, uh, and now we're going to go back and use them as they did before. And who knows what would happen to them? You know? So many people are healed and delivered uh, only for their own sake, they believe, to go back and go on with their sin. <laughs> go on with their sin line. But that's not the way of the Lord. There has to be you know, the transformation of the mind through the word which is why the the lord said to that leper you be made whole complete see 
typifying and depicting our walk as we as we grow in the Lord, not just a, 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 an encounter with the Lord, and then going off on our merry way, as many have. Um, even relatives of the members in this fellowship. They've, they've came to the Lord and, and they've experienced something or a, a, a got a touch from the Lord and then they've gone back to Catholicism, even to wearing dual, dual, dual crosses. Not one, you know, with Jesus on there and saying that... Uh, Look out, Mary, it's hailing and all that sort of thing. You know, hail Marys and going, they go back. See, they, they never complain. More confused than ever, really, because they've slighted the Lord. They've taken something of the Lord and they're, they're ungrateful. Ungrateful and unsaved. You know? I was out in the West around Gundawindi, more Way. And I was in Gundawindi. And I was going to go to Maureen. And I was staying where I could get shelter. I came across an alcoholic, full on, elderly man, in this uh, home, you know, where they let me stay for nothing. Because I was preaching out in the West. I led him to the Lord. The Lord really touched him, you know. He was a full-on wino. But, you know, he was so touched by the Lord, I had to get up in the morning and, and bolt early so he wouldn't follow me. But I got to Maureen. And later on that day, who comes walking down the road? That wino. He come walking down the road. How are you? How's it going, Paul? I said, oh, I can't escape you, can I? Eh? He said, well, I wonder where you were. You know, I got up this morning and you weren't here. I said, oh, look, it's like this. You, you, you must go now back to where you were and, 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 and go from there telling what the Lord has done for you. Eh? Isn't that wonderful? And, and that's like this leper. He, he came back to the source. He came back, not the barbecue sauce, or the tomato sauce. I like chili myself. He came back to where it was all happening and the one. He never forgot, see? You go through all the Old Testament and you'll see the Jews forgot God. You say, how can that be? All these Red Sea events and Noah, you know what I mean? All these things going on. How did you forget God? Cloud by day and fire by night. Manna. Hey? Food coming out of heaven in wafer form. How did you forget God? But they did, didn't they? And just like these nine lepers, it carries all the way through from Genesis. Adam and Eve forgot, gave, forgot God, didn't they? Hey? They never came back to God. They should have broke into into conversation with the Lord. And said, "Oh Lord, help us! We're being trying to. He's trying to take us away." Do you think the Lord would have heard him? I reckon he would have. He would have just said, "Be gone out of this garden, serpent!" But they never cried out to the Lord. They took it into their own hands. See. Just like these nine lepers. They took it into their own hands. Where right now, we don't need him anymore. We don't need to give thanks. Oh, we don't trust him anyway. We don't honour him anyway. We don't admire him anyway. We don't need him anyway. I'm clean now. You know, I don't need to be near him. I don't need to keep near to him. I, I don't need to serve him. See? And then went their way. But they were never made whole. Do not be conformed to this world, Romans 12, 2. 
be transformed, the renewing of your mind. And, and Jesus done a miracle for that for that one leper. He said, now you're whole. Now you're complete. The others weren't complete. They didn't get the blessing. Right? They didn't get the blessing. He wanted to put on the mind of Christ. The others were too busy uh, looking on the things of the world and getting back to business. You know, business as usual. Getting back in the world. They got their clearance from the priests. They, these people aren't lepers no more. You can talk to them. You can, you can give them a job. You can walk with them. You can eat with them. They're not lepers anymore. It's written here by the Pharisees. And the, the priest said it's okay. They've got their clearance. And we're the ones that have done it. The priest probably said. <laughs> See? Because everyone knew them as lepers. And so they went in back into the world. But this other fella, this, this Samaritan, he was so grateful, wasn't he? So grateful. And, and he, the Lord just erased all those memories and all those minions. He erased them. Oh, hallelujah. Erased them and, and, and just deleted them from his, from his uh, mind. Hey? Right? Just went delete, delete, delete. Oh, hallelujah. Eh? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ungrateful and unsaved. It's the grateful that are saved. We have to stay grateful. We have to stay thankful. We, we have to stay trusting the Lord. Even though we, we, we might be delivered from the bottle. We might, we, oh, look, I'm not prostituting anymore. I don't know what's happened. Something happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. It's like the prostitute I used to minister to in the valley, and every time, I spent quite a few years there, but I used to see this one prostitute all the time uh, on the street, and she'd come to me and we'd talk, and uh, I continued to tell her without looking down on her, uh, you know, I used to talk to her about the diseases that she could contract and, and, and how she was um, uh, degrading herself and how it was not going to end up good. And at the end of the day, there's the big... Uh, the big day, the judgment day. You can't enter the kingdom like this. She said, but I go down to the church down there now and then. I said, that's not good enough for you to do that. You, you're not going to be complete unless you surrender to the Lord and let him be Lord. It's not good enough just to say, oh, Jesus, Master, you know, and not come back. It's not just good enough to sing Amazing Grace, which is a song I don't like anyway, and blow me down. How many years later, I don't want to say a date because I'll be incorrect, that's not the truth. How many years later, I'm watching the TV and here it is on the TV. Someone bashed her to death. Out, took her out in the car, out to one of the parks, one, one of the... Uh, rest, rest, rest areas out of town, out of Brisbane, up Strathpine Way or somewhere like that, and they found a body there. See, but how much did the Lord endeavour to help her time and time again with her leprosy? You know, and, and she get a touch from the Lord. You know, and I pray for her, and she, oh, wonderful. Gee, I feel wonderful. I like talking to you. I feel wonderful after I've spoken to you. I said, that's nice. I said, but hey, you, you need, you, you know, you, you know when everything's going right with the, you and the Lord, you feel wonderful when you're not even talking to me. Amen. Oh, right. You feel wonderful when you're not even talking to me. 
You feel wonderful when you're on your own and everything's going wrong. <laughs> fine. You're fine. Hey? Where the others go? Luke 17, 19. Arise, go your way. You're fine. See? The others never had the fame. See, it was a sovereign healing. It, 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 it wasn't anything that um, really needed fame. It, it was just a command, go to the prunes. There, there was no boogie woogie bugle boy company be about it. You know, there was no, oh, oh. It was just go down the prunes. They cried out and went down the prunes. But the faith in God was really shown when the guy came back. He didn't just come back, he came back on his own. See? But he, used, he was used to being with the boys. <laughs> they used to try and stick each other's skin on with sticky tape and that, you know? They were used to each other. They were, they, they were familiar with each other, they were friends. Leprous friends. And they'd all sit together and, and comfort one another. So there was a there was a bonding there. There was ties. You know what I mean? They were ten lepers. I mean, this was a gang of lepers. Th these were the uh, the leper gang. You know, and they hung out together. They they um, ate together. They stunk together. They done everything together. But he left them and come back because he trusted Jesus. Amen. Right? He, he, he gave thanks. He honoured Jesus. He admired Jesus. He needed Jesus. He wanted to be near, keep near to Jesus, and he wanted to serve Jesus. See? Because he was touched. And to get a touch from the Lord is so real. But that's not enough, is it? We have to, we have to be, be thankful. We have to give thanks. And like I said, you know, to... The word thanks deconstructed. I trust you, I honour you, admire you, need you, want you, want to keep you near to me and serve you. That's all in the one word, thanks. That's all together. Who would ever think thanks means that? Right? Who would ever think thanks would... Oh, so involved. It's so simple, you know, but yet so profound. To give thanks. Giving thanks in all things to the Lord. Right? So, yeah. Ungrateful and unsaved. There's so many uh, churches and their leaders out there today and have been. I mean, this message is what? 12 years old? 11 years old? When I first ministered this message, 11 years old, it's still fresh today. Churches, their leaders and congregations begging people to attend their religious programs. They're all over the earth. But the holy remnant, they know that derriers, bums on seats, money in bags, and business savvy programs will never make for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. This guy realised, this one leper realised, I'm in debt. I am in debt. I, I owe this Jesus. Look what he's done for me. Right? He's Took away my sin and put the Holy Ghost in me. I love, I love that man from Galilee. Now it did happen when Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. I love, I love that man from Galilee. He saved my soul and done so much for me. See, this leper's soul was saved. We know by the mindset. The, the, the soul consists of the mind, the will and the emotions. Everything was intact with the Lord. 
He had the mind and the will to go back. It was his mindset. I must go back. I'm not letting this go. I'm not taking this for granted. I'm going back. <laughs> he felt more attached to Jesus than the nine lepers he spent most of his life with, if not all his life. Every day. Begging and and begging and uh, uh, whinging and, and feeling sorry for themselves. He said, no more, I'm not begging, no more. I, 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 I don't have to be a beggar anymore. I'm going to worship my Lord. I'm, I'm going back to Jesus. Hey? And so... That's just, it's so such a beautiful story that um, even though he was outnumbered nine to one, he never looked at the numbers. But yet so many people today, you know, are you going to church? Oh, I won't go unless you go. Are you going to follow Jesus? I won't follow Jesus unless you do. Those people aren't following Jesus. No. This leper's mind will and emotions very emotional thing to have a, an addiction very emotional thing to to be a leper you know uh, always willing wanting to be free but trapped in this rotten body rotten flesh that's like a person in their sin isn't it? in this rotten rotten flesh Putrid to the nostrils of God. Sin is. Wages of sin is death. And so, um, Jesus said to this leper uh, that he was going to be complete mind, will, and emotions. Basically, new creation. Anyone that is in Christ is a new creature. And like this leper, new creature. The old leper had passed away. Everything had become new, fresh. Hey? Go show yourself to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. And, that, and he was cleansed and they were cleansed. The nine and, and the one. But there's only the one that wanted to go on and be saved and be with the Lord forevermore. Can someone say amen? amen. He had that conviction, see? He, he, he was grateful. If we're grateful to the Lord and, and we're humble enough to be grateful to the Lord, right? Um, you will have the convicting power of the Holy Ghost in your life. You will have that guidance. Right? No matter whether it was drugs or, or torment of, you know, demons or minions and the past life. You know, so many people, millions of people out there, they, they can't their mind and their emotions are torn terribly, torn asunder, their mind and their emotions, that their will, they got no longer any will to live. You know? But the Lord deals with all that when we worship Him. Hey? Luke 17, 10, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving Jesus thanks. And he was a Samaritan. See that? Just fell down. He, 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 here I am. Just fell. Never even climbed down. He just fell down. He was so in love. He was just so touched by the Lord. 
He fell at Jesus' feet and glorified, right? And gave thanks. He just went, oh, oh, I tell you what, Jesus, I would have just said, right, you'll never even know that you ever were a leper. I'll make you complete. I'll make you whole. Look, I don't even, I can't even remember. I can't even think of and perceive how I was a drunk or a chain smoker and the filthy language. It was like I've never been a drunk. It was like I've never touched a cigarette. But I was a heavy smoker, a chain smoker. And I, I, I was drunk eight days a week, always booze in my system. It gave me such uh, inferiority and oh, it was just so terrible. It was, I could not do anything without booze in my system. But the Lord, when he delivered me, I fell down at his feet. I, I said, oh Lord, I was just so grateful. <laughs> I'm just so thankful. So thankful. 29 years later, I, I have to just continue. It, I'm compelled. I, I, I'm, I'm driven and, 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 and constrained to, to, to just write songs about this, this Jesus. And to tell people how wonderful he is. How wonderful is this Jesus that I met. He knows everything about me. Everything. He knows when I'm sick and he knows when I'm well. Whatever my condition, Jesus can tell. Because <laughs> he knows everything about me. He's got my name and he's got my number two. Hey? I can't have, I, I, I do what I do because of him. The glory belongs to Jesus. Whether I preach, teach, or write, or sing, it makes no difference. I do it to the glory of the Lord. No other reason. I'm not doing it for the money because there's no money. I'm not doing it because I get rich. Because I'm not rich. What, what is he doing it for then? Eh? He's not famous. He's not loaded with dough. He's not loaded with dough ray me. Eh? He's not popular. It doesn't give him a lot of friends. It makes him a lot of enemies. What's he doing it for? Oh, hello. You ask the Lord. Because I'm grateful and saved. <laughs> I'm not ungrateful and unsaved. I'm grateful and saved. It's a humbling thing to stay with the Lord. You can come to the Lord, but to stay with the Lord, that's another story. I've seen many people come to the Lord, but they weren't humble enough to stay with the Lord. They're ungrateful. Because gratitude begets humility. And humility begets gratitude. Simple as that. Right? He wasn't worried about the boys anymore. Well, the boys think. See you later. Outnumbered, but he didn't give a stitch, did he? Nope. What were the old mates think in the gym? What were the old mates think in the club? The old mates, you know, the old bikey mates. What will they think? Who gives the rats what they think? They want to be with the nine lepers? Let them go. They're not complete and they never will be. Never. They might have got a healing. Yeah, heaps of people say, come to the church, we're having a healing meeting. Which is not in the scriptures, is it? There's no such animal as a healing meeting. A deliverance meeting. This man specialises in casting out devils. Oh really? I've never heard of that either specializes I know God specializes in things thought impossible 
and he'll do for you what no other power can do. I never heard of Paul, Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John having a healing meeting or a demon caster outing meeting. You ever heard of that? That's just like garbage religion again. All these concoctions and practices, where did they come from? When, they didn't get them out of the Bible. Hey? All the, 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 you know, get in the pulpit and they're, oh, we're gonna, they think it's humble that they pray for the Holy Ghost to come. I thought he'd already be there, wouldn't he? Where did Paul pray for the Holy Ghost to come? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they just spoke up. Speak up, chocolate lips. Come on, you know. Let's hear what you have to say. All these conjurings that they get into and oh, the wongy dongy. You know? It's just religious garbage and, and con men. It's not the Lord. And I've seen people go to healing meetings and they were healed. You know, God done a nine lepers on them. But they never come back. Did they? They got their healing and went their way. And those people never, ever, ever be complete. You know the problem with humanity today worldwide? You know the problem? You know why people have so many boats and, and they've got to travel here and they've got to go on holidays there and they go, oh, they've got skis hanging off the roof and, and, and they've got motorcycles in the back and, oh, they've got things booked here and booked there and their credit cards are maxed out. You know why they do that? They're incomplete. <laughs> They're incomplete. That's why they got, you know, you see a person with the more activity going on in the house and the more things happening, the more incomplete they are. Yeah, ministers out there, they got all these hobbies and holiday things going. And they got all sorts of things going. All the social activities in the world, they're incomplete. Incomplete. Let's go to Colossians just for a tick. Colossians, Colossians, Colossians. Chapter 2. Verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophies and empty deceit according to the traditions of men and women according to the basic principle of the world and not it's not according to Christ for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete once you got the jet ski and you got the motorcycle dirt gang motorcycle and then you got the boat and then you got the you know, uh, what else did you have? Roller skates. And then you got the, uh, you know, Ontering Tereticus that just passes by. And, and then you got the ski slope, slopes, you know, where you go skiing. No. We just push all that aside. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't know. I don't need to go to the uh, running of the bulls in Spain. I don't need that. I'm not that stupid. I don't need to go to the Olympics. I don't need to go. That is nothing to do with me. I've got my own marathon happening here. Hallelujah. I'm running the race of faith. It's got, and that race has got nothing to do with the wide road. Hallelujah. It's a narrow marathon road. Complete. All just so trimmed and cut down, narrowed down, and and and, and to one road to to Him, complete in Him. See, that's like this leper. Your faith has made you complete. <coughs> All the things of the world won't. You've got to have faith in Jesus. 
when he is your everything. This leper said, he basically said, when he said thanks, he said, you're my everything. Right? But there's so many churches out there, they're backslapping people, uh, 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 the ungrateful, backslapping them every week, picking them up in buses, they're doing everything and anything. And these, these people are just so ungrateful. They're ungrateful and unsaved. I love the uh, 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 I, I, I love the the main um, the main point in uh, uh, illustrated in, in in the parable of the ten lepers. There's a there's a really distinct point that. Jesus never ran after that leper. He came of his own will. He left all his security. His security was with the ten. They were a group. That was his family, basically. That was his. He, he, he grew with them. He walked with them. He sat with them. He ate with them. He, 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 he cried with them. He done everything with them. But he, he left that to go and bow down at the feet of a man. He never even knew. Jesus. Master. <laughs> eh? He respected the law because he knew before he had to stay aloof. He, he, he had to, to stand afar off. But now he said, I can get right next to your feet. I'm going to worship at your footstool. Holy are you. Eh? Exalt the Lord thy God, exalt the Lord thy God, and worship at his footstool, worship at his footstool. Holy is he, my Lord, holy is he. Came back and glorified God. He came back and got down on his face, lifted his head and said, Exalt the Lord thy God. Exalt the Lord thy God. And worship at his footstool. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. He knew he couldn't come. He had to go far. This is a holy man, this one. This Jesus. We've got to stay afar. He knew he was Jesus and he knew he was Master. And that was it. That's all he knew. He didn't have the Greek, Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic translations down parrot fashion. That's all he knew. Jesus! Hey? Son of David, have mercy on me. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. But he poured out the oil and the wine. Oh, he poured out the oil and the wine. The kind that restores my soul. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. But he poured out the oil and the wine. Well, the oil is the Holy Ghost, and the wine is the Word of God. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road, but he poured out the oil and the wine. So this grateful leper, he didn't need no bus to pick him up, eh? He didn't need no promises. What am I going to get if I come back? Mm -hmm. Hey? What do you think about that? Humility brought him back. Gratitude brought him back. Hey? Isn't that wonderful? Ungrateful and unsound. So... If we're grateful and humble and Jesus is your God and ruler, I reckon I'll see you in the kingdom. Hey? 
fight, fight. I don't think people understand uh, what Jesus meant when he said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you'd do mighty things. Faith in Jesus. It's, un, it, it's untold, it's unwritten what faith in Jesus can do fully. To trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not on our own understanding. If we only take faith in the Son of God. Live our lives by faith in the Son of God. Right? We, we won't have all that baggage like the nine lepers carried with them their skin might have been clean but they still had the mental scars they still had all these things uh, that they had accumulated from the old leper uh, leprous life their, their mindset wasn't right their will uh, hadn't really changed. We see that because they never went back. And their emotions would, would still be, you know, living in the past. Because it's only faith in Jesus that delivers us from the past and delivers us from all that sinful past that was and no longer is. Because it's faith that shows us daily and, and, and every moment that we're new creatures, brand spanking new. We're not those old people. And, and you can't judge me on my past because I don't live there anymore. I just don't live there. I'm not there. If anyone does judge me on my past, on my repented past, uh, I would have to uh, to uh, say that's the devil using that person. That's the evil one. Because if if God if if God was to to mark uh, repented sin, no one could stand. If God was to mark iniquity, if God was to mark uh, uh, repented sin, no one would enter the kingdom and no one would stand at the judgment stand. But he he raises repented sin. But unrepented sin remains. See? Unrepented sin is unsound. Of course, it has to be known sin. Unrepented known sin. Still remains. God does not forgive the unrepentant. And we know that because where there's forgiveness, there's cleansing, deliverance and empowerment. Okay? Tell a message today. Ungrateful and unsaved. They go together. Grateful and saved. Ungrateful and unsaved. Grateful. Forward slash humble. Saved. You can't follow Jesus unless you are humble. You can't follow Jesus unless you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, which is his word. God's hand in the earth is his doctrine and word, the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. The message, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Paul. Come on. Can be no other way. So let's rejoice that... We're grateful and we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God daily and we uh, 
assigned and our ultimate objective is to be saved to the uttermost go all the way that we are people of, of thanks giving thanks to the Lord in all things trusting him I trust you Lord, I honour you Lord, I admire you Lord, I need you Lord, I want to keep near to you Lord and I want to serve you Lord. And that's what I'm going to do with my life this day forth and forevermore. And everyone said, amen. and amen, and amen, I'll give you all the glory Jesus. Thank you Lord.